Despite the crumbling of its support in the science lab, evolution is still the only game in town in the public school classroom. The famous film Inherit the Wind is a highly fictionalized account of the famous Scopes trial of 1925 in which a teacher was prosecuted for supposedly teaching Darwinian evolution in the classroom. Though the facts of the movie are far from the actual facts of the Scopes case, which itself was something of a publicity stunt, the movie is best remembered for its caricature of the Christian townspeople who only wanted biblical creationism taught in schools. How ironic, then, that it is now Darwin's theory of evolution that is protected by law, with all other views being excluded. If you can look at Darwin as a theory, it is a theory that should be taught in our schools. But it is just a theory. However, in our society, in our culture, and in this nation, it has been accepted as fact. And it has been enforced in the schools. We are forced to, to look at one viewpoint, and that is Darwin's theory of, of human development out of lower species, and neglect others. And it is illegal uh, in many places to even propose that that there may be a different uh, a viewpoint here, that we may be creatures of a sovereign God. Naturalistic evolution has been enshrined in the nation's public schools as the only acceptable theory of human origins. It is protected by the courts to such a degree that one judge ruled that a school district in Dover, Pennsylvania could not even inform students that there were scientific challenges to evolution or direct them to critiques of the theory. All the Dover School Board actually did, they, they really didn't mandate the teaching of intelligent design and biology class. What they said was there are criticisms of evolution from a scientific standpoint, uh, one of which is something called intelligent design. And if you'd like to read more about this, there's a book in the library that we have provided that you can read. That's all it did. Frank Mennion is an attorney for the American Center for Law and Justice, which defends the First Amendment rights of Christians around the country. Both in my own experience and in the experience of other attorneys, teachers who attempt to present scientific criticisms of evolution find themselves, more often than not, on the receiving end of a threat either from their superiors within the school district or from the ACLU or Americans United for Separation or similar groups. But though the Dover case was widely hailed as a landmark defeat for intelligent design theory, in reality the results of the case have no actual effect beyond the case itself. To put too much weight on the Dover decision is a mistake. It's only courts of appeals and Supreme Court decisions that really carry any kind of significant precedential weight. But why is the Darwinian view so zealously protected against all questions in public schools by groups such as the ACLU, Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, and the National Center for Science Education led by Eugenie Scott, which took part in the Dover case? The ACLU has a stake in the argument over Darwinism simply because the ACLU has a very distinctive religious and political agenda rooted in a revolutionary worldview that comes from Darwinism. The whole intent of the ACLU is to change our society, to make it into something new, something that the old Christian foundations of America could never allow. Einstein would not be allowed to teach in a public school, a government school today, because um, he referred to um, to God. He said, I am trying to discover um, God in the universe. Can you imagine? He'd, he'd be driven out of a public school today. All the great scientists um, saw their work as finding, uh, as finding God in the universe, as finding the design. Um, and to have, you know, these hacks like Eugenie Scott come in and say, oh, that's not real science. Unless you keep God out, it's not real science. It's preposterous. Proponents of evolution have argued that their view should be the only one taught in schools because their view is science while other views are theology. But critics note that evolution itself proceeds from religious assumptions. Darwinism is essentially a theory of the universe, a theory of origins. Therefore, Darwinism is a study of ultimate things. Darwinism really is an alternate theology. If you teach that all of life is simply matter, that everything is simply matter, 
that it just has it always existed, um, that it has no purpose, it has no reason, there is no nothing guiding it or no one guiding it. Those obviously are philosophical statements, and yet that sort of language uh, has appeared and probably continues to appear in standard high school biology textbooks in this country. And then you've got to get all the modifications that go along with this skull to this skull. Dr. Ken Poppy has taught science in public high schools for over 30 years. He has encountered firsthand the stranglehold evolutionists have on the curriculum. And so after uh, faithfully teaching what the standards have you teach, like in public schools there are standards that you're supposed to follow and you are obligated to teach the evolutionary theory. Uh, it's probably in every state standard ever written for science education. And yet after that I would always take the time to bring up some objections that maybe the monkey to man theory does have some problems with it. But like many teachers, Dr. Poppy found that there's almost no room in today's classroom for scientific objections to protected scientific theories. I had a forced transfer last year from the job because just the mention of intelligent design in an elective class was all it took for a couple parents to start, uh, well first they, they sent a, a message straight to the superintendent. And then it worked its way back to my principal, and he said, okay, what's going on in your science class? And even though there were many Christian parents who, who really supported what I was doing, all it took was the voice of a, a couple of Darwinists to make the system get all nervous and say, we ought to remove this problem rather than deal with it. Dr. Poppy was reassigned to teach in another school within the same district. Thankfully, with a principal that was more objective on the subject. If the media suspects that you're, you're uh, changing the mold of science education, they will start investigating. There are groups like the ACLU that are very afraid of such movements. And it often can become a political firestorm that some people just don't want to take on. The ACLU has been the principal means of guarding the sanctity of the theology of Darwinism. I fully believe that still today, if you talk too much about anti-Darwinism, you're going to get in trouble with the establishment. 